Uh, good afternoon to everybody. And here we are with Hernan Tena Cortez. He is a language teacher. He has been studying um, the master in applied linguistics in the University of Atlantic. And he has also developed many uh, studies and he has been preparing himself about um, at different universities. Yes, uh, he has a degree in graphic design in information technology and he has worked worldwide. He has worked in Colombia, in, he has studied in Michigan, in Maryland, and he has also a TKT in Cambridge University. So he's going to, to work with us today. He's going to, uh, uh, to, he's going to speak about ICT and the way to apply this ICT into the classroom. Good afternoon, Hernan. Hey, good afternoon, uh, Alejandra. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as, as Alejandra said, my name is Hernan. I'm a language teacher. At the moment, I am living in Ireland, uh, in the Republic of Ireland. Um, I have a master's in distance education, um, PLE, to teach English, personal learning environment. If anybody knows what this is, please raise your hand and let's uh, make it a debate. I don't know if any, any of you have an experience with personal learning environment or personal learner environment. If not, it's okay. If yes, please raise your hand and give us a, a, a view of it. No? Yes? No? Okay, so I will uh, share screen. Yes. Okay, so uh, basically a personal learning environment, it's an environment designed for the student, okay? As a teacher, I will recommend to create a blog or a website for the student, and that will be a personal learner environment, okay? But the definition, according to Mark Long, he says that it's a system that helps learners to take control of and manage their own learning, okay? So it will apply that we are not managing the learning. We are just sharing what we know, sharing our experience, but the only one who can manage the learner is the student, okay? Because the student knows how and what to learn. And he also knows what his needs are. So that's why a personal learning environment is um, very important. So what we have to do as a teacher, as a tutor, we have to provide the support for the learners. And this tool is divided in um, different sections, okay? This is um, a, a personal learning environment that I did to work with a group of teachers just like you, but I was presenting these as a topic. So this is a personal learning environment but at the same time, I am teaching how to create one. So here it's the, big, the, the homepage or whatever in which I am just giving like small pieces of what this is. Then I have the thematic focus. This will be like the explanation of the topic, right? In which I am putting all the review of literature if you want to call it like that so let's say we were talking about i don't know simple present so in the thematic focus i will put all the theory related to simple present okay then i have social networks in social networks what i what i'm doing is i am linking my personal social media if my media is related to what i do as a teacher or i will link social media of some people from the area okay so let's say i don't have a facebook i have my personal facebook but i don't have a facebook that i use to teach english 
So what I will do here is I will link a, a Facebook page, for example, related to the practice of English teaching, okay? Support resources, here is where I put additional references to the topic, okay? So let's recap. In thematic focus, I will put the theory, the explanation. In social media or social networks, I will link social media related to my topic so that students can go and interact in the target language, but at the same time in the target topic. Support resources are additional resources in case the students want to go deeper on the subjects. And then we have the activities. In, in this, in this uh, part or in this section, I will propose an activity for my students related to the topic I just explained, okay? Why is this important? Because that's when the students will be able to put into practice what they have learned in the previous four sections. And finally, and obviously at the same time, the sources and author, okay? So if I am the author, if I was the one who created all these, then it would be only my name but if I, only, if I also got some uh, information from different authors, well, I, I will have to cite them, you know, I will have to put the references in this case. So that's basically what a personal learner environment is. It is very hard to use it with, or to apply it as the name says, a personal learner environment. If I, if I have a class with 20 students, it will be nearly impossible to create 20 personal learner environments for each one of them, right? But it is, it is possible to create one personal learner environment for each topic I teach. Okay, are we clear up to here? Any questions, any impressions? Some tips about this personal learner environment is, uh, okay, I have a YouTube channel. I want, I want to share with you the experience. I have a YouTube channel and why did I create it? Because back in the years, back in 2015, I was teaching computer technology in English and I wanted to teach to my fifth graders. They were only 11 years old. I wanted to teach something very easy, something that you do in two clicks. And it was to how to save a, a Word document as a PDF, right? That is, if you know how to do it, you know it's very easy. It's just go on file, save as PDF, put the name and click on save. That's right, that's it, right? So obviously they were in fifth grade, they were 10, 11 years old. So they didn't know, they were learning how to use the computer. So I went to YouTube and I tried to find a video to recommend. And this is very easy, but all the videos that I found were about 10 minutes, 12 minutes. And I was like, okay, this, they will learn it in one minute. It's not fair if I give them a 12 minute video just to learn this, right? And apart from that, the accent, you know, in English, it's very easy because we have what's called, in it, what's called the universality of English, right? The universality of language. Noam Chomsky talks about this. English is a universal language. You could find or you could hear many accents, but the words we use in English are the same all around. In Spanish, it's not like that, okay? In Mexico, they have some words for some things. In, in Argentina, you guys have different words. In Colombia, they have different words depending on the region, okay? If you go to Bogota, they have a word, but if you go to the coast, they have a different word. This does not happen in English. So it happened to me when I was looking for this video. So what I did is, I, what I did was like recording the video and sending them the link, okay? That had many challenges. The first challenge was the camera, okay? And the second one was the, my voice. I didn't like my voice and I was like, oh my God, how is, how, how, what are they gonna think about my voice? That's gonna be awkward. Whatever, whatever, I did it and it was a success, okay? They loved it, everybody loved it. I started getting comments from all around the world, Latin America, 
about the video because it was easy. It was like a two minute video. So I kept on doing it. So now from, now, from then on, every time they had a class with me, before the class, they already had the video for that class. It is awkward at the beginning because creating material is not easy. But you will say, okay, why would I be creating something related to simple present if the internet is full of that? That's right. But our students, they feel identified with our accent, with our voice, and with our approach. So if you give them tools created by you, you will create respect on them, okay? You will inspire respect. Okay. And also, the magical thing about ICT is that you create the resource or you create the video once and it will work forever, right? When you teach a class, you plan the lesson. In the lesson, you normally uh, include keywords and from the keywords in the classroom that's like your starting point so and and you get to a point where you will be teaching the same thing every two or three months every time you get a new group okay whereas if you create a video and every two or three months you just send the link of the video you will be saving time it's a time saver okay so this is my suggestion about personal learner environment. Try it, create one, and you will see how it will work. It could become, it could also become like a planning template because if you look at it on the first section, which is the home, that's the introduction. So that would be like if you were in a face-to-face -face environment, that would be like the warm-up, right? So if you're doing simple present, Include funny videos, for example. Include jokes. Include funny activities. Uh, daily routines. That's what you, what you teach in Simple Present, right? And that's like a brief introduction. That, would, that will create interest. That will wake up some sort of interest on your students, right? So give it like five or 10 minutes. And after that, go to the break. Go to the hard part, which is the theory, which is right next to it, right? And go through it with the students. No matter if you are if you are in a virtual environment like we are today, or if you are in a face-to-face -face environment. If you are in a face-to-face -face environment, you can use a video projector. And then they will go to the social media. In the social media, they will be able to create a community if I have 50 students and I am giving the links for a social media, either for my social media or I don't know, for Chomsky's Facebook or Krashen's Facebook or even Maria Alejandra, which is an Argentinian teacher in Argentina, English teacher, a colleague of mine. If I give my students her Facebook and I tell them they're all from Colombia and I tell them, you know what? There is this teacher from Argentina. She's really good. And she has these topics about simple present. Go to, their, go to her website and leave her a comment. And if I send the 50 of them and everybody leaves a comment, we will have the opportunity to expand the community. And regardless of your thoughts, this could be something to engage them because they will be like, oh my God, I'm having, I'm having friends from Argentina. I'm having friends from Chile. I'm having friends from different countries. I'm becoming famous. And this is how the students in early ages and even as adults work. Okay. And then at the end, we have the activities. In the activities, it is really good because they will be developing the activities, but at the same time, they will be reviewing what the teacher said in class. Okay. So they will not get to the point when, where they will try to do the homework. And they will be like, oh, okay, what did the teacher say? I was not paying attention. And then they will have to call a friend. Hey, do you remember what the teacher said about this? What's this? What's that? No, if you have a personal learning environment, they will go to the theory and they will catch up if they didn't get it. And at the end, you give them the resources in case they want to go deeper 
or in case they want to see where did you get the information from, okay? So as teachers, we have to be the example. I cannot be in the classroom asking for uh, authentic material when my material is not authentic or when I'm using material without citing and without saying who owns it, okay? Remember, there is a really good bo uh, book from Alan November. It's Who Owns the Learning? And he explains how the learning is owned by the students. This is the read theory. I sent that image, the, the red and white image I, I was showing uh, previously, I sent it to Alejandra. She can send it to you guys if you want, because the links of each tool I am, go over, I am going over to uh, today is there. So this is the platform as a teacher. I can create new students account. I can create, I can track students progress. I can delete students or put them in different classes. Okay, as you can see here. And as a teacher, I can also get some printable assessment. Okay, everything is free. It also has uh, an upgrade or a better version, but everything is free. Okay, so this one is an easy, an easy test, an easy quiz, okay, about kittens. It has the name, the date, the questions. It also has a writing part, so you can assess, apart from reading comprehension, you can assess writing uh, skills, and then the answers at the end, all right? Okay, yeah. now we are going over USA Learns. This one is amazing. I used to use it for students that were behind the level or students that wanted to go above the level. But you can also use it with any student, okay? So you can also sign in as a teacher or sign in as a student, okay? If I sign in as a teacher, you have to uh, click, are you a teacher, sign in here. So this, um, this platform will give you a complete English course, okay? With listening practice, grammar practice, reading comprehension and writing. And as a teacher, you can just come and see your students' progress. For example, here in this adults class, this is the key of the class. I can add, uh, I can view the class. I can add students. I can do anything I want. I can go and see Martinez Sebastian, for example. I can go and see his course. This is what he has completed. Only this here, nothing else. Look at how many units. If you go to the first English class, it has three lessons, introduction and vocabulary, language practice, review and quiz. If you go to introduction and vocabulary, then you have five units, uh, eight units, sorry. The welcome, the learning goals, meet Miguel, learn new words, meaning match, listening match, say it and listen for it. So if, if a student was, sorry, if a student were failing the class, I will give him this as a reinforcement, okay? If a student wanted, to go above the level of the class, I will also give him this as a reinforcement. Or I will just create a class with all my students and give them this tool and have them practice for one or two hours per week and put them and set some goals. Like for example, on, on the first week, we will be working uh, the first unit, which is first English class. So this week, you guys have to complete this whole unit. And at the end of the week, I will come and check who completed it and who didn't. Okay, so this, this um, resource, USA Learns, is very good. Then we have this, ESL video. Who knows this platform? Does anybody know it? <clears throat> no. No? Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. So ESL video, it's very good because it's a funny one, okay? Here, you can go in beginning, low intermediate, intermediate, high intermediate, and advanced. Okay, if you go, for example, for beginners, like this Starbucks Japan, 
preposition of location. So basically what this platform does is that it gives you a video that you have to listen or watch and then the questions, okay? And at the end, you will just click, see how you did, and it will give you a result, okay? That's basically what the platform does. It also gives you a PDF. It's very complete. Uh, it has changed a lot. If you knew the pla this platform three or five years ago, it was totally different to what it is today. So they are updating their designs and their methods and methodologies and everything, okay? So it also depends on the level of students you have, but as you can see, it has all the levels, okay? Then we have this one, ES lyricstraining.com it is very good if you're learning different languages because you have quizzes in different languages okay in this case we are focusing in english okay so basically you can look for any song you want okay any song you want look this one is very popular in in ireland at the moment okay so you can play the song Click on the level you want, okay? So if you want beginner, intermediate, advanced, or expert, expert, it is basically the same thing because it's the same song, but what changes is the number of gaps in the song, okay? So let's say we're going to intermediate. You can click for the game. You can create an account because it works as a social network and people compete to be on the first positions and at the end you will get uh, some points or, or a result or whatever depending on how fast you did it okay so they will rank you in positions and obviously everybody wants to be in the top five so if you want that you can create an account if not you can just do it without an account so then we have breaking news english do any of you know this uh, this page? Okay. Yes. So this one is very good. I love it because it's. I mean, when I teach, I don't want, I don't like to teach a plain topic. Okay. That's why I love the clear methodology. I I like to give my students more than a topic, more than a simple present. And I like to create this critical thinking about life and about world and about society. So when I teach, I try to use updated information. And that's when I find this page very useful because they update it every day and they include real news, okay? And they also, to design the guide according to the level okay so we have for example uh, water seller becomes China's richest man okay so we have level 0 level 1 level 2 level 3 if so I click on level 1 I will be able to see all the guide okay so I have a listening section I have a reading section a match section spell section words and even more Okay, so basically this is the, the text or the content, only two paragraphs. And then I have a phrase matching from each paragraph. Then I have a listening. I can download the audios or I can just read the, the passage or the paragraph to my students and they will have to write down the words that are missing. Then here, they we have to separate the words by slashes. Here, this is a survey. This is a discussion between students, okay? About questions and to create a bit of a debate. This is some free writing. Here, you will be able to see the answers if you download the PDF. So here at the beginning, you will be able to see a small PDF with a smaller version of the unit and a whole PDF 
with the complete version of the units okay that's basically the whole thing here are the audios it is really good to use this resource when we teach english okay any questions no i i have a question like yes so, uh, i would try, try to write it down so i can't remember uh, okay you was talking recently about a website was uh, read theory yeah like is it like a kind of forum for example uh, we are used to use uh, the google classroom uh, the, yes the google classroom platform i was wondering how makes them different why should we use one and not the other or maybe both at the same time i mean which one is better than the other I will say I will say there are no better or worse um, resources. Okay, uh, Google Classroom is really good. Is uh, I will see it. I'm not saying is, but I will see it as a learning management system. Okay, so basically Google Classroom it's a virtual classroom. It's a virtual space for the teacher, in which you can tell the students to drop and download all the activities and you can show an evidence to the program coordinator okay but read theory they are in charge of creating the content for english language learners okay so basically google classroom it's a platform for all the subjects i could say whereas read theory is only for people that are learning english or people that want to improve their reading comprehension abilities and it works as a social network so in google classroom my students will be sharing a virtual space with their classmates whereas in read theory uh, my students will be learning a virtual space with students from all around the world because they will also get some points and some rewards and some things that we don't we we, don't, we never think on that but it motivates them okay um anything else no nope. at the end i will i will also give some space for more questions anyway okay so we were here in uh breaking news english then we have this agenda web agenda web basically it's a web that compiles different resources to teach english so we have grammar exercises vocabulary verbs exercises etc 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 so uh i will say it's like a database for teachers so if you want grammar exercises you can click on the first option or if you want just video lessons or cartoons you can go here click on the link and it will uh bring you to different web pages related to whatever the title is okay then we have that quiz uh do you know this one it's very popular in south america in that quiz you basically have uh quizzes for different subjects um it's very good uh, for english and math although we are concerned about english at the moment okay so this one It's one of my favorites when I am uh, evaluating vocabulary, okay? Because it is only useful for that. So I click in English, then here is the extension, how many questions I want to be in the quiz. So if I want 20, the level from one to 50. So then if I want to set like a like the length of the of the quiz so if i want to give them okay so if it's for 20 words i will give them 10 minutes maybe and uh the order um i would put it random i can say english and spanish if they're spanish speakers which is not recommendable even if they're spanish speakers or i can say definitions and then just create the quiz here and assign okay so here it's for example dictator so this the a is the the right question hamper this is the right uh answer sorry not question okay consistently 
in a consistent manner. So they will just have to basically choose one of one of the options, okay? So I have to click on create it. Then here is a code. And here I can click notify. So I can give them the code for the test, which is this one, or I can notify to their emails, okay? So if I click here on send, they will get an email with the quiz and a link and they will have to present it. And then I will have to come and see how did they do. Okay, so for example, here I have all the examiners that I have done when I was a math teacher, for example. Here are the grades. So I have uh, this Maria Alejandra. So here it's like a historical. So with in, in the school that I was working for, they used to approve with 65. So whatever is below 65, it's um, failed. This one, for example, Larry's Medic, 55, that's failed. So I can go in, in the quiz and see what happened. Where did she, um, when was she wrong and whatever. Okay, so it's a complete website or platform and that will make our life easier, okay? Then we have uh, free ESL material. This is uh, one like agenda. It's very similar. It's just like a database with links to um, work with my students on different topics. Read, write, think. This one is um, it's very good as well. And it helps you improve your reading and writing skills and at the same time it improves the critical thinking which is what we need keeping in mind how the world is okay and then and last but not least i have the randalls this one is also very common esl lab here you will find listening activities okay what i used to do is i used to give them for example intermediate i used to give them the quiz the week before and then for them to practice and then the week later i will uh, assess the piece okay so i have here a whole bunch of topics i don't know barbecue party let's say so general listening quiz and then i have everything the level and everything and the length Okay, so pre-listening exercise. So you get to the, you go to the classroom or you open the virtual classroom or whatever, and you do a pre-listening exercise, which is a brainstorming, okay? Starting from this question, what kinds of food do people often prepare and need at a barbecue or family party? Okay, so your students will have to come up, come up, sorry, with different um, opinions. Then we have some idioms that will be included in the test, okay? Eat like a horse, eat someone for breakfast, okay? And we give also the, the meaning. So eat like a horse means to eat a lot. And eat someone for breakfast means to beat badly, okay? And then we have the piece, the listening piece and some questions. Here is some vocabulary practice, some post listening exercises, and some investigation in, one, in case you want to go deeper. So if you play the audio, you will hear. Hey Ashley, how many people are coming to the barbecue tomorrow? Well, um, there's your family, that's four people. Okay. There are three from my work. Okay. And then Mike and Megan from across the street. And See, I went very fast in the four and it was the wrong, the wrong answer. So. That's basically it about these um, Randalls. So those were the 10 resources that I had prepared for today, plus the personal learning environment, which is a whole methodology. I don't know if you have any questions. This is the time if you want to ask. If not, I hope this information is useful for you guys. Um, <laughs> I don't know, Maria Alejandra, any questions?
students, this is a time for you to, to ask if you want to know something else, anything else, any information. No? Okay, so I, I, I'm just going to do the, the recap of the, of the lesson, of the conference or whatever. Um, in terms of teaching... I have a question. Yes, Omar? Sorry. Yes? Um, uh, I would like to know, where do you find all, all these websites? Uh, along the How do you do to, to uh, gather all, the, all this information? Where did I find them? Or where do you find them if you want to use them? Yes, how, uh, what is your... How do you do to, to find the, the websites that you are showing us? Okay, that... Uh, to be honest, it's just about the practice, like the daily activity. I try to, I try to give variety of contents to my students because one of the keys, one of the keys when you teach is to engage them. If you if you don't engage your students, you're lost. Okay. So nowadays we have technological students. So if I'm coming to the classroom with an English notebook with a dictation and with these traditional methodologies they used to use with us, for example, I will not succeed, right? So I try to find as much tools as I can that I am sure they will like. That's the only way I will make the process fun, right, funny. So if I use social media, instead of forbidding the social media, if I used it, if I use it to teach, I'm creating community and I, I am pretty sure they will get something out of it, okay? They are afraid to participate in my classroom, but they won't be afraid to, afraid, sorry, to participate through a social media where they know that the teacher is not looking at them to outstand the mistakes and, that, and where they know that everybody is on the same level and that everybody will write down some mistakes. So answering to your question, where do I find them? It's basically teachers meeting exchanging exchanging um, thoughts with my colleagues, Googling. Um, to be honest, the university did not give them to me. Uh, I have a bachelor in, in English language teaching and I did it, I started it in 2012 and I graduated in the 16 and the university did not give any of these resources. At the moment, I'm finishing the master's in applied linguistics and the university has not given any of these tools. And in the past, I did a master's in virtual education, actually, which is these. And even there, I didn't get any of these. I did get some theory in terms of what is it to teach online? What's the virtual tutor profile? What's the virtual student's profile? But I didn't get any resources. So basically, it's about researching and exchanging media with with uh, your students uh, you can find me in my youtube channel with my co my complete name uh, any or in in that youtube channel you will see my whatsapp numbers from colombia spain and ireland that's where where i am and anything you need you can text me at any time and i'm pretty sure i will i will answer maybe late maybe not late but i will answer at some point so yeah, I hope I did answer the question. Any other questions? Yeah, I have me. a question. Yes, oh, okay. Marlene. I, uh, I want to know if you gave Marlene. us a lot of websites. Yeah. And I want to know if you use some apps also. Well, yeah, in terms of apps, game. look, what I do yeah. is, what I do, to be honest, what I do is all these resources and websites and whatever, I suggest it. I suggest them to my students because if I use them in the classroom, they will be replacing me. Okay? So if I use them, like, for example, if, if, if I came to this classroom today and instead of me speaking, instead of me directing the conference, I will have put a video showing all the resources some of you will be not happy about it, okay? It will be something boring. 
So I do use some platforms, some apps like Duolingo, for example, it's an amazing app for vocabulary, but I give it as a recommendation. I don't use it in the classroom because I cannot let the technology to replace me. Okay. So if I put a video, I will put a five minute video in the classroom and then we will have a discussion about it. Okay. I, I even have a virtual academy in, in my classes. Everything cannot be automated. Okay, I, I give them some minutes of videos, some minutes of games, but then I have to do some interaction because that's the only way the students won't replace me. And we as students, someday you will be a teacher, but today you are a student and maybe you are a student and a teacher, but you will always be a student, no matter if you are registered in a college or not. Okay, we, we have to learn all, our, all along the life. We have to learn something. And when we are students, you know, we are, we tend to identify with other people and this is the students with us. So if we don't speak and instead we put a video that speaks for us, they will get to a point in which they will find the process pointless, you know? So Duolingo, it's a good app. Uh, I also recommend lots of apps related to, um, dictionaries offline dictionaries if you go to google play store or the uh, apple store i just don't remember the, the name you can you can type down english dictionary offline and you will see an option okay the same app is for spanish and italian and i think french okay because i used to teach in a public school where my students not all of them had mobile data okay so they had a whole bunch of excuses. This one is, not, is, is good to avoid excuses, okay? I also use, there is WPS Office. This app has a Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and a PDF reader with a mobile version that will make it easy for the students. So some of them will not have money to buy the book, but they will have the phone to read it. Okay, so that, those are some apps that I use, but in terms of English, basically it's Duolingo. That one is complete enough. Okay, Marlene had a question, right? Yes, and um, it is related with the first website. It was made with Wix, I think. Yes. And I wanted to know if it was made for you and it was difficult to make that website? No, it, it was make, made for me. It's not difficult. Uh, if you want to text me later, I can say, well, or if you want to look it up in, in YouTube, write down a video tutorial to create a website in Wix. It's very easy. You just have to follow the steps. Wix is very good because if you don't pay, they will just, just the link of the page will be uh, kind of weird because they will add some words like the Wix publicity, but that's it. Whereas other providers will put some ads and I don't like that. But Wix is really good and it's really easy to, to make it. Like that one, like, like the first thing is to gather the information. If you gather the information, it will take you about an hour to create the website. Not more than that. Okay. Okay. Anything? Thank anybody, you. Anybody else? I had one last question. I'm yes, Mariano. Sorry again. Uh, I was I was wondering uh, regarding of what you just said of including the technology inside of the classroom, and I, I was wondering if there was a limit in related how much technology you can use in a classroom. I mean. You said something uh, interesting about you cannot just came here and uh, play a video and you don't say a word. But is there a limit? Can we use uh, just using technology and not using the old resources like papers? Or I, 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 that's my question. If there is a limit? Okay. Uh, look, obviously, everything has a limit. Okay. Uh, I am a technology-based teacher, but 
you okay teaching is not something structured because we have a saying in english is to teach is to touch lives the author might forgive me because i forgot his name but that's it okay so you have to even if you plan your class when you get to the classroom you might have to make some adaptations because of the class's mood for example so i would say there is no limit for technology but just be aware because technology can't replace you okay i'm one of those that use that uses netflix as a resource for example and i will put the netflix show with english subtitles but out of each chapter i have to get a guide uh, an activity or a workshop or whatever for example prison break is is a uh, series i used to use and out of it it's very funny well not funny but entertained at least okay if any of you have watched it you know that it's this brother that goes to prison just to get his brother out of it because he's not guilty so what i did with this uh netflix show is i kept on creating activities in terms of ethics okay so i was like okay students okay class or whatever would you do what he did would you do you think that's correct going to prison to get him out just because the judge determined that he was guilty and he wasn't so let's discuss about ethics let's discuss about honesty let's discuss about corruption uh, whatever you know so if you make the difference you will make it but i can do that with a teenager's class but i cannot do that with uh with a class in which their age is between the 40s and 60s right because they want a logical explanation they want a grammar based class whereas my teenagers they don't want a grammar based class because they didn't have grammar when they were picking up their native language so they think that the process could be the same using technology is really good because if you go to youtube and you type english pronunciations or different english pronunciations or whatever there are many videos in which they will show you for example i think it's 27 different accents in the uk and i'm here really close to the uk i live in the republic of ireland not in the northern ireland and their accent here is way different to their accent in the uk and we are just I don't know an hour away in a plane six hours away from from you know in car from northern ireland so that's another thing that i had here uh, as a as a tip or as a suggestion don't be aware of speaking english because of your accent english is now a lingua franca okay what a lingua franca is that language is the english sorry is the language people use to communicate when they don't have a native language in common. So when people make fun of my accent, for example, I will be like, okay, but you want me to be a native speaker, but native from where? How many, lang how many countries in the world are native English speakers, right? So if you take into account all the countries that speak English as a, la as a native language, plus all the accents among those countries, come on, at the end, you'll be crazy. You'll be freaked right so if you don't practice you won't improve all right i still have an accent because english is not my native language but i'm pretty sure that my my accent today is not as strong as it was when i came right so just don't be aware of pronunciation don't be aware of speaking and give the same message to to your students because english is not a perfect language Spanish is, but English is not. And with Spanish, it's the same thing. In 20 years from now, we will be having these debates in Spanish because researchers have confirmed that Spanish will be the lingua franca in a couple of years from now. Why? Because today, 20 years ago, English was not included in schools, in Spanish-speaking countries, right? In Argentina, 20 years ago, English was not included as a subject. So that's why everybody graduated from school, from high school, 
and they went to an English institute to learn English because they wanted to learn to speak a second language and English was the language of business. So they wanted to speak English. But today we're graduating people from high school with English already. So in 20 years from now, there won't be this need, the need that we have today. Whereas it will be with Spanish because Spanish is becoming more popular than before. So there is no limits in terms of technology, but my suggestion is to get to know your class. If you get to know your class, you will know what they like and what they dislike. And if you get to know this, plan your lessons, taking as a starting point their interests, right? Because that's the easiest way to learn. If you show them that by learning this, they will get here and here is the, where they want to be, they will learn. But if you don't show them that, they won't learn because they will think that is useless and that is a waste of time. And if you think that you can get them there with technology, go ahead and do it. So it all depends on the group of students that you have in front of you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, sir. I have a question. Yes. Uh, Abigail is your name? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, about the last resort you explained. Okay. Does it only have American English uh, listening or it also has English listening, English accent listening? That's a good question. And to be honest, uh, I haven't thought about that. So I would invite you to go and check because I, I don't want to say something. I, I, I presume that it has both, but to be honest, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you very much, Hernan, for your time, for this conference to the students from the Profesorado de Inglés de Félix Atilio Cabrera de Formosa. We are so far away and uh, it's, it has been a pleasure to, to be with you here and to listen to everything that you have explained. Um, so thank you very much. Yes, let's clap our hands. Let's put on your... Uh, <laughs> I think that's not going to be the, 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 the last time to meet uh, because we have many different tasks uh, that we can work with you. Uh, so uh, I'm going to invite you again. Yes. Sure, sure. It will be a pleasure again. Okay. Thank you, students, for coming. And that's all for today. Goodbye. Can I hope, I hope uh, okay. everything was useful. I am sorry if, if, if I was not clear enough in something and then I will I will see I was uh, I will see like at the end uh, what to improve and think teaching is about reflecting guys that's that would be my my last my last words teaching is about reflecting if you don't reflect on your practice and if you don't make it different every day the <laughs> system will throw you out the system will expel you okay so once again thanks a lot and also, thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. So